Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you my secrets for profiting in bull and bear market summary by Stan Weinstein and Stan Weinstein Trading Method. In my opinion, Secrets for Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets is one of the stock market books to read if you are an investor and trader in the stock market. Because the strategies in the book that Stan Winstein shared with us has been used by Stan Winstein himself to generate consistent profits in the stock market and avoid many of the worst bear markets. So stick around in this video if you want to find out more about Stan Winstein's trading strategies. One of the trading strategies that Stan Winstein shared with us in his book, Secrets for Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets, is when is a good time to buy stocks. I think that's one of the most common questions that we as investors and traders in stock market have. And Stan Winstein in his book shared these three optimal buy points. The first is a breakout strategy where the stock moves out of stage one and enters into stage two. The second strategy is a pullback strategy where the stock pullbacks towards the breakout point after the initial rally from the breakout. And the third strategy is when the stock moves close to the moving average and consolidates in a stage two advance. If you're a bit unsure of what these three strategies mean, don't worry because I'll be going through with you in greater detail right now. The first optimal point to buy a stock according to Stan Winstein is a breakout. It is when the stock moves out of stage 1 and enters stage 2. I have a video over here sharing Stan Winstein's stage analysis and the 4 stages of a market cycle. You can watch that video after this video to gain a clearer picture of the 4 stages of a market cycle. But all you need to know right now is stage 1 represents a consolidation and stage 2 represents an advance. For the breakout strategy, we want to see the stock moves out of a consolidation and into the advancement phase. And ideally, we want to see the stock to be in a relatively long stage 1 base before breaking out. And when prices break above the resistance, we want to see prices also breaking above the 30 week moving average. And along with that, we want to see two other things. The first is we want to see a breakout with strong volume. And the second, we want to see a breakout with a strong relative strength. In total, there are three criteria we want to look out for in a breakout. When prices break out above the resistance, the first criteria that we want to see is prices breaking above the 30 week moving average. And the second is a breakout with a strong volume. And lastly, when the stock breaks out, we want to see that the stock has a strong relative strength. Over here, we have an example of a breakout. This area is the consolidation where prices move sideways for a while and the resistance of the range was this horizontal line. When prices broke above the resistance, we see prices also breaking above the 30 week moving average and there was a pickup in volume. Let's take a look at a real example now. Over here, prices had a long consolidation for a period of time. And then at this arrow over here, it indicates where prices broke above the consolidation and broke above the resistance. And you can see that for this stock, Mexico Fund, when prices broke above the resistance and the range, it fulfills the three criteria. So what are the three criteria again? The first is that we want to see prices breaking above the 30 week moving average. Over here, prices were above the 30 week moving average. So that's the first criteria. The second criteria is we want to see good volume when prices break above the range. Over here, you can also see that volume starts to pick up when prices broke above the consolidation and the resistance. The third criteria is we want to see that a stock has a strong relative strength. This is the relative strength line. And the relative strength line is trending upwards and above the baseline of zero. When a stock breaks out of a long consolidation with these three criteria met, there's a high probability that prices will rise from there. And for this example, you can see that after prices broke above the range and the consolidation, prices took off immediately after that. That's the first optimal entry point for a stock according to Stan Weinstein. The second trading strategy that Stan Weinstein uses for entry in the stock market is a pullback strategy. Before we go into the details of the pullback strategy, one thing that you need to know is that even though the stock might be on an uptrend, this doesn't mean that the stock will continue to go up in a straight line, but rather it follow a wave-like motion. So there will be ups and there will be downs. But overall, the trend is still upwards. With that said, we can expect a stock to pull back even in an uptrend. The next optimal point to enter a stock is when a stock pullbacks towards the breakout point after the initial rally from the breakout. For the volume side of things, we want to see volume pick up from the breakout and contract on the pullback. And another thing to pay attention to is that even though the stock might pull back, the stock shouldn't fall below the previous resistance. While the pullback strategy is less risky compared to the breakout strategy, because with a breakout strategy, there's a chance that the breakout is a false breakout. But with a pullback strategy, we can ensure that the breakout is a solid one and not a false breakout. However, with that said, the pullback strategy also has its downside. And one of the downside is that we might potentially miss out on huge rallies. What we can do is combining the two strategies together. We'll buy half of our position on the breakout and buy the other half on the pullback. That way, we can minimize our risk of a potential false breakout, but at the same time, not miss out on a potential rally. Using the same example as before, for the breakout strategy, we want to buy at point A where prices broke above the resistance. And you can see that after prices broke above the resistance, there was a pullback, and the pullback was back to the old resistance. But the pullback did not fall below that resistance level. 
And in addition, when there was a pullback, there was also a contraction in volume. Those are the two things that we want to pay attention to in a pullback strategy. If we see these two confirmation signals in a pullback, then we can look to add our other half position into the market. Over here at point A is our breakout strategy where we buy half of our position first. And after the breakout, for our pullback strategy, we can then look to buy our other half position. The third optimal time to enter our position in the market is after consolidation. During a consolidation, the stock will consolidate in a range and the moving average will catch up to the stock. A thing that we want to pay attention to during this period is that we want to see the moving average still sloping up. And we want to buy the stock when the stock breaks above the range and resistance. After a breakout from a stage 1 base, prices rose up by quite a fair bit over here. And there will be times when stocks consolidate for a while to digest the move before it. So if a stock charges up very fast ahead, after a while the stock needs to rest for a while. And this rest time is when the stock consolidates in the range and moves sideways. Prices consolidate for a while and at the same time you notice that the moving average is still sloping up. So that's one of the criteria that we want to pay attention to. And after prices broke above this consolidation, that is where we want to enter our stock at. So this third strategy is quite similar to our first strategy which is the breakout strategy. The difference between these two strategies is that for the breakout strategy, the consolidation or the basing area takes place after huge decline in prices. But for the third strategy, the consolidation strategy, the consolidation and the basing area takes place after prices have increased for quite a while. That is the two difference between the breakout strategy and the consolidation strategy. This example will give you a clearer idea of the difference between the two strategies. At point A over here when prices broke above the resistance and the range, this is our breakout strategy. And after prices have risen for quite a while, prices then consolidate one more time. And the breakout above this second consolidation is our consolidation strategy. So even though the criteria are very similar, there's still a difference between the two strategies. And the main difference between these two strategies is where the consolidation takes place. The second trading method shared by Stan Weinstein is the top-down approach. We're going to take a look at the market first, followed by the sector and the group, and then the individual stock itself. For the market, we want to trade with the trends. So if you haven't checked out my video on stage analysis by Stan Winstein, you can check out that video first before continuing this video. Stan Winstein mentioned that we want to trade with the trends. So in other words, we want to trade in a stage 2 uptrend. For the market, we want to check out the charts of the major indices. So if you're trading in the US market, we want to take a look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq. The second thing that we want to take a look at is the percentage of bullish stocks increasing. We are checking this to determine the market breadth. Generally, the greater the percentage of bullish stocks, the higher the probability that the market will continue to move up in the future. The second thing that we want to take a look at is the sector and group. Similarly, we want to see that the sector and the group is in an uptrend or in a stage 2 market cycle. The third thing that we are taking a look at is the individual stock itself. We also want to see that the stock is on an uptrend and in a stage 2 market cycle. And we can use the three optimal buy points that we have learned earlier in this video to enter our position in the stock if it meets our top-down approach criteria. Some of the things that we want to take a look at for the stock is good volume, the price above the 30-week moving average, strong relative strength and etc. So for example, if we are taking a look at Microsoft, Microsoft is a US company and is listed in the US markets. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at the markets first. For the markets, we can take a look at the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. We want to make sure that the market is on an uptrend and in stage 2. The second thing that we want to take a look at is the sector and the group. So you can see over here, Microsoft is in the technology sector. So we want to take a look at the chart for the technology sector. In this case, we can take a look at the Nasdaq. And we also want to make sure that the Nasdaq is on an uptrend and in a stage 2 market cycle. And then lastly, for the top-down approach, we will take a look at the individual stock itself. And the individual stock itself must also be on an uptrend and in a stage 2 market cycle. So that's an example of how we can use the top-down approach. The third strategy that Stan Winstein shared in his book, Secrets for Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets, is using stop losses. And he highlights this point, that we must always have a protective stop with any position in the stock market, regardless whether we are investing or trading. The two areas where we can look to place our stop loss in the market is using a prior support level and a 30-week moving average to determine where we can set our stop losses. In this case, the percentage is not a determining factor, so we must be flexible when we are placing our initial stop losses. So what does he mean that the percentage is not a determining factor? Say for example, if we want to enter our position in a stock, the prior support level and the 30-week moving average is about 5% away from our entry position. But other books recommend that we set our stop loss at least 10% away from our entry position. So should we set our stop losses just below the prior support level and the 30-week moving average, which is around 5% away from our entry position, or set our stop loss 10% away from our entry position? According to Stan Weinstein, he believes that the support level and the 30-week moving average serves as a more important factor to consider when setting our stop losses. Another very important point that Stan Weinstein highlights is that we need to know where to place our stop losses before entering our position in the market. Even before we enter our position in the market, we need to decide and determine where we are going to place our stop loss. Where does this stop loss strategy come into play? 
If all of our buy criteria are met, the next thing that we want to check is the initial sell stop levels. With all else being equal, we want to choose the stock with the closest stop loss level because it's the best choice from a risk to reward point of view. Let's take a look at two examples. We have option A and option B. And for these two examples, we want to implement our breakout strategy. That means we want to enter our position in the stock when the stock breaks out from the consolidation and the resistance. And for these two options, we want to set our stop loss based on the support level and below the 30 week moving average. So which option will you choose? Option A or option B? With all else being equal. We want to choose option A, right? Because for option A, we are placing our stop loss just below the moving average or the red line in this example. And for option A, the distance between the entry position and the stop loss is closer than the distance between the entry position and the stop loss for option B. So from a risk to reward point of view, option A is the better option. That is how we use stop losses when making our trading decisions in the stock market. The fourth trading method that Stan Weinstein shared in his book is when to sell. Now that we know when are the optimal points to enter our position, the things to look out for when entering our positions, and where to place our stop losses, the next thing that we need to know is when to sell. Stan Winstein mentioned that as long as the stock is in stage 2 and above its rising 30 week moving average, we want to allow the stock some room to move. As mentioned earlier, stocks do not move up in a straight line, there will be some pullbacks. So we want to let our profits run as long as the stock is performing normally. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. We enter our buy position at this point over here at around $20 and we set our stop loss at around $17. After we bought, the stock moves up to point A and then at after point A, there was some pullback over here. And at the pullback at B, we do not want to move our stop loss up just yet. Our stop loss will still remain at the initial position over here. Only when the stock moves back up to this point around here, back to around the previous level of A, then we want to shift our stop loss up to point C, just below the moving average. And similarly, when the stock continues to rise to point D, there was a pullback at D and the stock moves to point E. Again, at point E, we do not want to move our stop loss up just yet. We want the stock to move back up to the price level of around point D at point F over here. Then we shift our stop loss from C to E. And similarly, when the stock pull back to G again, we do not want to move our stop loss just up yet. Instead, we want to wait for the stock to move back up at this level around here, back to the previous high of F before we shift our stop loss from E to G. And we repeat this for point H and point I. Can you see so far when the price moves up, the moving average is also sloping up. As long as the price is above the 30 week moving average and the moving average is still sloping up, we want to allow some room for the stock to move. But can you see that as the stock moves up and starts to store a bit over here, the moving average also starts to even out over this point over here. So when the moving average starts to flatten over here, we want to tighten up our stop loss. Instead of placing our stop loss below the 30 week moving average, we want to place our stop loss below a support level. Over here you can see that there was a bit of support at this horizontal line. So we want to move our stop loss just below this support level. And when the stock breaks down below the support level, we get stop out at this position over here at around $45. And we will have made a tidy sum of profit. To recap, as long as the 30 week moving average is sloping up and prices remain above the 30 week moving average, we want to give the stock some room to move. But when the moving average starts to flatten out, then we want to look to tighten our stop loss. And that is when we want to place our stop loss just below a support level. These are some ways that we can place our stop losses. We can place our stops below moving average and support levels, or we can also place our stop loss below parallel lows and trend lines. If the things I shared with you in this video seems a bit complex at the start, don't worry because what I'm sharing with you in this video is a bit more advanced. What you can do is rewatch this video and watch the stage analysis video a few times to fully grab the learnings of this video. If you have learned something from this video, smash that like button because it will really help the channel grow and allow me to produce more content such as this. And if you are new to this channel and haven't already subscribed, make Make sure you subscribe to this channel because each week I release new videos about investing, trading and the stock market. I'll see you in those other videos to your financial success.